Virtua Fighter was one of Sega's biggest polygon releases when they began making 3D games back in the early 1990s. They received multiple games across their arcade, Saturn, and Dreamcast platforms, and even got a 2D edition for the Sega Genesis. What a lot of people don't know is that there was actually one made for the 8-bit portable Game Gear of all things. It was released in 1996 under the name Virtua Fighter Animation, but was also known as Virtua Fighter Mini in Japan. It was a game based on the anime that was based on the game. And for the very first time in the history of the franchise, there was a deep and intricate story mode that finally explained what the hell was going on. In this episode, we will be taking a quick look at Virtua Fighter Animation and see if it's worth playing. The first thing you'll likely think of when you see this one is the Genesis version of Virtua Fighter 2. Much like that game, this is a 2D representation of a product that originally ran with polygons. Surprisingly, this does not simplify the gameplay much. There are still a ton of moves for each fighter, and many of the techniques from the arcade still work here. Even the combo and jump systems are similar. The thing that hampers the gameplay is the button layout and the copious amounts of input lag. Because the Game Gear uses two main action buttons, you must use the Start button quite regularly. It's set to your guard by default, but you can move that around to suit your playstyle more. No matter which button you assign to start, however, reaching over to hit it really affects the moves you can pull off. The input lag is the worst of the two, however. It takes what seems like a tenth of a second for every move to actually play out on the screen, and this creates nothing short of frustration trying to get the more complicated combos to register. For seasoned Virtua Fighter fans that don't like to button mash, it's a big roadblock. Fortunately, there are two gameplay modes to help things out. The story mode follows our hero Akira as he meets new friends and foes. You'll learn new details about the fighters and their motivations, and can even use them in battles. Unfortunately, Jeffrey is missing in action with no explanation why. There is also a standard versus mode you can play that is sort of an arcade mode that doesn't have a story and allows you to jump right into the fight. These fights are governed by all the things you expect. It has a timer, you can be knocked out the ring, and you must score wins in two rounds to advance. The animation in this one is the highlight of the visual presentation. These fighters are animated great and have a ton of different moves. Seriously, the 8 megabit cartridge is practically all animation for the huge moves list. You will not find another 8-bit fighter offering anything close to this one. Of course, the trade-off is the backgrounds are super simple. They are often little more than a single pattern repeated across the entire background. There is an option that allows you to play it zoomed out or zoomed in, but the real-time option that switches back and forth automatically based on the fighter's positions is really jarring. And while the graphics are impressive for what they are, the sound and music are utterly forgettable. Most of the speech is gone, of course, and the stage tunes are little more than background noise you'll pay no attention to, a far cry from the great stuff you're used to. The biggest failing of Virtua Fighter animation is the interface. Using the start button regularly is not comfortable at all, and trying to get in multiple button presses for things like throws is damn near impossible in the heat of battle. This means you will find yourself not using the more complicated moves and relying on the simple punches and kicks for the majority of your time with it. In the plus column, the story here is based on the Japanese anime, which is deep, complicated, and really delved into the background of these fighters. You only get a snapshot of that complexity with this game, but hopefully it'll be enough to motivate you to explore the source material a bit more. I didn't know half as much as I thought I did, and it's worth a look just to see these characters interact with one another outside of combat. 
In Japan, Sega launched this with its very own Game Gear model. It came with the system, the game, and a link cable for multiplayer, a mode that was stripped from the Western releases entirely. Tech Toy would take the Game Gear release and turn it into a Master System game the following year. It is much the same product, though the gameplay is hamstrung even more by the lack of a start button. Not being able to block can be quite the handicap. Honestly, either version of Virtual Fighter Animation is likely not going to appeal to many of you. But if you've ever wanted some real story with Sega's flagship fighter, this can be quite the interesting way to spend an afternoon. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.